All right, guys, welcome to part two of the uh, fiber Vortec uh, engine swap. I guess this might be part three. I don't know if this is part two or part three. It's the next part from the transmission one. As you can see, transmission back is back there. Today, I don't know if we're gonna try to get the engine pulled out today, or I don't know what the plan for today is, or for this video, I guess I should say. But um, we're just gonna start, I've got a whole checklist of stuff that needs to be done to the engine before it can be yeeted out of here. And so the first step is draining the oil and we're gonna start with doing everything underneath it, you know, cause there's the oil and then also there's like the exhaust that we need to undo. There's a few things we gotta undo also like drain the coolant. So we're just gonna start doing those. First step though is draining the oil and then we'll go from there. Sound good? So we got the oil draining. Um, I undid this sensor that's like right up there. Just right there, undid that sensor. I also realized I need to undo the um, return line for the fuel. Um, I don't think there's anything else underneath that needs to be worried about except for the engine mount bolts. But besides the engine mount bolts and the coolant, I think all we're gonna really need to do is just the fuel line and the exhaust up in there. All right, so I don't know if you will to see it, but I got this uh, driver's side down pipe unbolted. Surprisingly, neither of the bolts broke. So now I gotta do the passenger side. Another thing I remembered is, there's like the, uh, that metal line that runs to where the cat was. That needs to be kind of cut up here around that. I'll just take a grinder to it and just snip it off. But then we gotta get other side down pipe off, drain the coolant. And I think that should be the last step before the car can go back on the ground. So I got the passenger side, both of the bolts broke, but as you can see, the uh, it's not on there anymore. I still gotta cut this one catalytic converter line thing, but as you can see, that exhaust is definitely, she ain't on there no more, boys. So uh, I'm gonna get that cut off real quick, and then we can pull the exhaust out. I'll have to unbolt the muffler, but and then the last step, I think, well, no, there's two more steps. We've got to drain the coolant and then right up in here on either side of the block, there are two, there's an engine mount bolt here and then one right there. We got to get those off too. So we got the exhaust rest of the way out. The next step is to drain the radiator of all of its juices. Now, I think the best way to do that is going to be just to undo the uh, bottom radiator hose because we've got to unhook all the radiator hoses, but we've got to do the one from the bottom first. That's the good stuff. Look at that, 30 year old coolant. Well, some of it's new, not all of it's old, but chances are most of that's original coolant. Like 90 10. <laughs> nah, maybe more like 50 percent with how much I had to put in it. Um, so, in order, I got one engine mount bolt, like the nut off, but we're gonna have to jack the engine up to get the actual bolt out. And the other one, the fuel pump gets in the way, so I'm gonna have to undo the fuel pump. I already got the lines off. But the fuel pump is really easy to do. I've actually, this one I have on here is one I've replaced, but uh, this is the exact wrong angle to be doing this from. Yeah, the fuel lines are off now. Uh, I don't know what else to say right now, other than we're gonna get the fuel pump out, get the nut off the engine mount, and then we'll jack the engine up a tiny bit to pull the bolts out and then we can sit the whole car down. So I'm gonna come back once we're ready to put the car back on the ground. Slide them down, nice and slow, just like that. Okay, a little bit fast. Look at that stance. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, the car seems so low to the ground now. DIY lowering kit. Deflate your tires. <laughs> so, uh, the next step, if we come up here. The next step is going to be like getting the other coolant hose off. Gas lines are already undone. We're going to get the other coolant line off. Get all the wiring mess out of here. You know, there's like wires on the alternator, the ignition coil, the distributor, 
all that stuff, all that's gonna come out. Our OEM. Yeah, this is this is factory. This yeah, this came with the card in '85. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so I don't know what we're doing next, but we're just gonna jump over to that. So, all right. So the next step after getting all that coolant drained is to remove the heater core lines, which are just these two right here, and also get these uh, the coolant the other coolant hoses the rest of the way out. So those really simple. I'm just gonna. I might just do them from the firewall and then just kind of dangle these somewhere. I might just fully remove the coolant hoses just because it'll make my life a little bit easier to do that. Anyway, so we're gonna, I'm gonna get those heater lines and coolant lines out and be back in a second. Well, as you can see, no lines there. That one broke, that's fine. There's uh, no hose down there and no hose from the thermostat over there. So cooling system is completely disconnected. <laughs> I'm gonna do the uh, get this air intake off and probably pull the actual whole air filter and whatnot off so we can get to all the goodies underneath there. Because we've got this whole mess of electrical that needs to come out. So I'm gonna probably work on that next. So I'll just kind of blip back when uh, I've got something else to show. All right, after a bit of a headache and whatnot, all the electrical connectors have been pulled. Part of that loom over there wrapped around the back over to this side. I got all that stuff disconnected. Uh, I tried to get the battery, but nothing really worked. So I'm sure there's some issue there, but I'll worry about that once we actually get the motor out. Cause I want to make it so the, you know, the headlights, the brake lights, all the car stuff is almost entirely separate from the engine stuff minus like ECU to the key, uh, starter motor to the key, just a few things like that. But most of it should be each, one should be mostly independent from one another. At this point, I just have to undo these two power steering lines right there, which I've already broken off in the, I've already gone loose in the past, so they shouldn't be that hard. And then I'm also gonna remove the cooling fan and then we can eat it out of here. Isn't that right? So I'm gonna get just these last two things off and then we'll get the engine hoist over and pull it out, which I'm probably gonna unclip these. So I, I think if I unclip these, I can get the hood 90 degrees, because I want to be able to test fit the hood with the new engine in. But anyway, when you guys, when I come back, we should be pulling this thing out. All right, we are back. We've got the hoist set up with the whole puller thingy, and we're ready to pull the engine out at this point. It's just draining a little bit more cooling out because I have it tilted forward a bit, but uh, I think we're going to try to get the camera set up somewhere so you guys can kind of see it in time lapse, and uh, we're going to see how this goes. So. Hopefully it all goes smoothly. So as you saw, we kind of started pulling the radiator inadvertently with the motor, but uh, so we're just gonna pull the radiator out the rest, the radiator out the rest of the way. But we gotta get these transmission cooling lines off first. This radiator isn't gonna be reused. I didn't really care if it got damaged during the removal, and that's exactly what's happening. So, you know, it's all good and dandy. Um, so I'm just gonna get these radiator lines off and then we'll go back to pulling the engine the rest of the way out. But just figured I'd make this a quick little note for you guys so you kind of know what's happening. We're gonna have to clean up some oil now. <laughs> well, with a bit of struggle, we uh, got the old 5 out. That's a very empty engine bay. So the next step, is gonna to be to like completely clean and kind of like, I wanna like, you know. Do you know what this is? My first engine pull. That's very true, it is. So the next step before we start testing that motor is for, first off, finish that one up. But then I wanna go through and like coat all this with undercoating and completely pressure wash it. And also I'd like to get the body electronics working uh, cause I know they don't work, but you know, engines out. We're gonna find a place to put this until I can figure out what to do with it. Looking so fine. Oh yeah, so fine. <laughs> no fly. Oh fly. Fly real. <laughs> anyway, so I think that's gonna do it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, leave a comment, and stay tuned for to see that thing, that Vortex 4.2 liter, end up in here with that five-speed manual. Be a good time. Peace out, y'all.